welcome everyone to our service of worship from Cardras Parish Church on this, the second Sunday in Advent. Lord God, your word is not distant, your love is not rationed, your grace is at hand, for you are present with your people as we all call upon you. We come to bless you as our creator, we come to honour you as our God. You are our Heavenly Father, revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, and we have come to delight in your words and be transformed by your love. Surely God's salvation is at hand for those who fear God, that his glory may dwell in all the land. the peace of Christ in our world. Come, Prince of Peace. Listen for the voice of the prophet crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Come, Prince of Peace. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him and the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. Come, shine on the earth today. Our first reading today is from the Old Testament, from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. And this is God's word for us today. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. 
The rough ground shall become level, the rugged plains, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout, lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Amen. A gospel reading from Mark chapter 1, the first eight verses. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. 
John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may God add his blessing to those readings from his holy word and may he bless our understanding of them. lovely mum had a saying well in fact she had many wonderful sayings but one which has helped me try to be a better person over the years is this if a job is worth doing it's worth doing right wrapped up in this old saying is the necessity for preparation everything needs preparation in order to turn out well you don't start building a house without first preparing the foundations. You don't start a long journey without first preparing an itinerary of what will be needed. You don't start cooking a complicated recipe without first preparing the ingredients. So it goes without saying that God didn't just appear among us. He made sure he took great care and prepared the way for Christ who would bring with him a treasure of grace and a scepter of government. For such an important world-changing event, God chose an unlikely character as the forerunner of Jesus, someone who would fulfil the prophecy of Isaiah and prepare the way, someone who considered himself unworthy for the role, someone who was at home in the wilderness but who would lead people to the feet of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That person was John the Baptist. John's mission was to proclaim the approach of Christ, to make his paths straight. In ancient times when Eastern 
princes marched through desert countries. Ways were prepared for them and all obstacles cleared away. And we see this in modern times with royal visits. If proclaiming the approach of Christ was John's mission, then his ministry lay in preparing people's hearts to receive Christ when he did come. Both John and Isaiah preached repentance, the need to turn back to God. But their message can be summed up in the word comfort. Comfort my people, says my God, comfort them. Isaiah speaks words of tenderness for the people after a long and dark night of judgment. Comfort is given in days of despair, the dark night of the soul, that of the individual and of the nation as a whole, will soon see the light of a new day. Isaiah's prophecy speaks of God's response to the cries of pain of his people and he says, be comforted. One is coming who will bring the high and mighty low and who will soften and make straight our crooked and rugged tempers that we may be ready for his will on earth. All our vain efforts will be like the grass and flowers of the field, here today and gone tomorrow. But the one who will come will bring that treasure of grace and scepter of government. What all flesh cannot do for us, he will. It is this good news that is to be spread to the farthest places of the earth. The Sovereign Lord is coming to rule with power, we are told. He will take care of his flock like a shepherd. And it fell to John the Baptist to be the one who would prepare the way for that Sovereign Lord, that good shepherd. John's preparation all took place in the wilderness he called home. There he attracted great crowds by calling them to repentance, by baptising them, and by heralding the one who was to come. There is significance in the wilderness setting. When Isaiah wrote his prophecy, it was while God's people were living in the wilderness of exile in Babylon. They were going through their dark night of the soul, but into that dark despair, Isaiah shone the light of a new exodus. And of course, they all knew about the exodus from Egypt when their ancestors were led by God through the Sinai wilderness towards a promised land. In this new exodus, God would lead the exiles back to Jerusalem through the wilderness. And when the promised Messiah comes, he too will lead his people through the wilderness of sin, not to a temporal land, but to the promised land of salvation. This is the good news. This is a message John the Baptist preached, that all who turn from their sins would be saved. His was an outward baptism of water, signifying the washing away of sin. But the one whose arrival he heralded would baptise with the Holy Spirit, signifying an inner cleansing which will set us free for all eternity. Jesus indeed brings with him treasures of grace to bless the humble poor and brings with him the scepter of government to rule with justice and mercy. And as Isaiah says elsewhere, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Amen.
Friends, let's pray together. God of faithfulness and truth, you sent your servant John the Baptist to preach in the desert and summon people to repentance. Make us and all things new, that in the wilderness of our hearts, we too may prepare a way over which your Son may walk. God of compassion and love, our world needs you because it is suffering from the way we mistreat it and its people. Our world needs you because without the knowledge of you there is poverty of spirit. And we need you, we who live upon this earth. We share in its faults. We confess the sins and failures which have harmed others and ourselves and grieved your spirit. Have mercy on us for the sake of Christ our Saviour. Your salvation is at hand. May your spirit bear witness with our spirits that we belong to you and that we are heirs to eternal life through Jesus Christ. God of power and might, we bless you that Jesus is no mere formula of prayer, that the Word became flesh and lived among us, that your Son lives as our friend in heaven, that your Spirit is given to your people. Give us discernment of mind that we may understand your word. Give us discernment of heart that we may become tender towards others. Give us discernment of life that we may take the right turnings and follow the right paths in the company of our Lord Jesus Christ, making way always and only for him in whose words we pray together now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today in church we are having our annual gift service for struggling families and people have been bringing gifts for children at this time of year. If you're watching at home and wish to contribute a gift, then can you please contact your elder and make arrangements with them? And next week, we are also going to be doing an outreach project um, following on from something we did with Messy Church last winter. And this is our blessings bags for the homeless filled with essential items for them at this time, which will help them and give them a little bit of dignity. And this is what it will look like. It's a large freezer bag, a three litre freezer bag. And in it, essential items like shower gel, hand cleanser, wipes, hats, uh, gloves, chocolate, um, shampoo, toothpaste, toothbrush, comb, things like that, that you can fill up a bag. Uh, Things that are essential items um, at this time of year for those sleeping rough or on the streets. And on Saturday the 12th of December, the front doors of the church office will be open and there'll be boxes in the doorway to receive these bags from members of the church and the community. And there is a video on our Facebook page explaining this as well. But also people can bring them on the the Sunday at the service from 11 o'clock. I hope you'll be able to join us on Wednesday for the second of our Advent evening reflections. 
and that's going to be available on YouTube channel and Facebook from six o'clock. So please join in and enjoy an evening of music and the Word of God in a reflective way. Now may God's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within guard and keep you from sin. Go in peace, go in joy, go in love.